What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and this is everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S8. So the S8 has been the most leaked device of 2017 so far with pretty much all of its features and design being leaked in some form or another. Now I've already done lots of videos of all of these leaks individually but in this video we're putting them all into one place to give you a really good idea of exactly what to expect. So getting right into it, we are going to be having two Samsung Galaxy S8s One's going to be the S8 and the other is going to be the S8 Plus. Now, why don't we have an edge this time around? Well, this year, both the devices are going to have edges. So for the past couple of years, it looks like Samsung has been slowly phasing out the flat version for the Galaxy S line. And this is the year when we're going to see the end of it. Now, the main differentiating factor between the S8 and the S8 Plus is going to be the display size. The S8 coming in at 5.8 inches and the S8 Plus coming in at 6.2 inches. Now, the first reaction is usually, whoa, that's too big when people hear about these sizes, but let me break these down for you. So the aspect ratio is gonna be different to last year. We're looking at 18.5 by nine compared to 16 by nine like we've had in previous years. So this means that the screen itself is not gonna be increasing in the width, but it is gonna be increasing in height. The other thing to bear in mind is that we have minimal bezels. So the top and bottom bezels have been decreased quite a bit. So that space has also been made up within a similar footprint to previous year's devices. That along with the fact that both displays are gonna be curved along the edges, means that we're not gonna be getting a much larger device in terms of the physical dimensions, but we are gonna be getting a much larger display. And this is also the reason why these displays are gonna be named Infinity Displays, because we barely see any bezels. We're looking at roughly about 83 or 84% screen coverage. Another rumor which is not too solid as yet is that these displays may also support some form of force touch technology. So this is similar to 3D touch on the iPhones, where if you push down harder, you'll get more options and things. Once again, this isn't the strongest of rumors, so this we'll have to wait and see for. In terms of the resolution, we are going to have Quad HD+. Plus. The reason why we've got the plus there is because of the 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio. So we are going to be having more pixels in terms of the height. Now, what does that translate to in terms of exact pixels? Well, the LG G6 has 2880 by 1440. So based on this ratio, I've done a couple of calculations and this should mean that we're going to have 2960 by 1440 in terms of the pixel resolution for the S8 and S8 Plus. No 4K display this time, but the Quad HD Plus should be more than enough. And the displays are gonna be Super AMOLED. So Samsung is known for their Super AMOLED displays, some of the best in the market with lots of deep blacks and very vibrant colors. Now, in terms of the build of both of these devices, we're looking at similar build language to what we've seen in previous years from Samsung. So we're looking at a metal frame with glass panels on front and back. Both of these are gonna be curved and also symmetrical around the sides. Once again, this should make both devices easy to hold in one hand and both are also gonna have IP68 water and dust resistance. This is something that we've seen in previous years from Samsung. Now remember, you'll be able to customize the look of the S8 and S8 Plus using a skin from dbrand who are our sponsor for this video. S8 and S8 Plus skin pre-orders are already active on the website and I'll be leaving a link to them in the description below. Now what about the internals? Well, both are likely to be powered by the Snapdragon 835 processor, the latest and greatest as well as some variants in different markets using the Samsung Exynos 8895. The devices are also likely to be the first commercially available devices with the Snapdragon 835. Apparently Samsung got hold of the Snapdragon 835s before others could get in. This is the reason why the G6 is still with the Snapdragon 821. Now in terms of specifics, the S8s are likely to be around about 11% faster in terms of processing power, 23% faster in terms of the graphics, and 20% more energy efficient. That along with four gigabytes of RAM should make these super fast and snappy. I know lots of people were expecting either six or even eight gigabytes of RAM, but this year we are just gonna be having the four. In terms of storage, we've got 64 gigabytes with a micro SD card slot. So you can expand that by up to 256 gigabytes. There is a small chance that we're gonna get a 128 gigabyte model later on in time, but the initial launch will be just with the 64 gig version. Now, in terms of the cameras, we are going to be having a 12 megapixel rear facing camera with an f1.7 aperture, optical image stabilization, and the dual pixel autofocus that we all know and love. No dual cameras this year. We did see some leaks, which I've covered previously in a video about the possibility of dual cameras because the Exynos 8895 does have the ability to support dual cameras, but unfortunately, this is not something we're gonna be seeing right now for the S8. This is likely to be saved for the Note 8. Now, based on specs alone, it might not seem like the S8 has had much of an improvement in terms of the cameras, 
but we're likely to have a slightly larger sensor, an improvement generally in terms of the hardware and software like Samsung do every year. And the S7 and S7 Edge were some of the best cameras last year. So I'd be expecting some very, very good cameras on the S8 and S8 Plus. We are gonna see an improvement in terms of the resolution from the front facing camera, eight megapixels up from five last year. And this is also said to have an f1.7 aperture, so it should be great in low light. For the operating system, we are gonna have Android Nougat with Samsung's skin on top. This is something that we always do have. And for the batteries, it's looking like 3000 mAh for the S8 and 3500 mAh for the S8 Plus. There has been a recent rumor that we might get 3250 and 3750, but most rumors are saying 3000 and 3500. This I think would make sense because with the Note 7, they try to cram in too much of a larger battery in that very compact design. And that's kind of what caused some of the fires and explosions. So to be safer, I would expect Samsung to go for something like 3,000, 3,500. Fast charging goes without saying, so you are gonna be able to get fast top ups on these devices as well as fast wireless charging, which we've had in previous years. Now let's go through all of the new and additional features that we're gonna be having on the S8 and S8 Plus. There's quite a few to go through. First and foremost, there is the fingerprint scanner which is gonna be on the back next to the camera this time. Now the reason for this is that on the front of the device there is no longer space for a home button because of those minimal bezels. Why it's next to the camera, I'm not sure and I'm not too keen on this placement because it's too close and I'm sure you're gonna be touching the camera quite a bit as well. It would be nice if it was more towards the center like many of the devices such as the G6 as well as the Pixels. And because there's not gonna be a physical home button on the front of the device, the home button is now gonna be an on-screen capacitive button. And there is gonna be customizable buttons on the left and right, so you can switch between things like the back as well as recent apps. And you can switch these around like you can do with the OnePlus and OnePlus 3T. Now the reason why I say this is because if you look at some of the leaks, on some of them, the back button's on the right, and in others, the back button's on the left. So this kind of makes sense. Next to the fingerprint scan on the back, there's also the heart rate sensor, which we've had in previous years. And on the front, on the top, there's lots of sensors. One of these is the iris scanner. Now we had the iris scanner on the Note 7 and it worked really, really well. But what are all these other sensors for? This is something that I've been questioning for some time. And a couple of weeks ago, I predicted that it may have some sort of facial recognition and this has now been rumored as well. So apparently, as well as the iris scanner, there is also gonna be some form of facial recognition and this is supposed to work as quick as 0.01 seconds. Now, if this is the case and it works really well, then it might be one of the reasons why the fingerprint scanner is now at the back because you're not gonna be using it as often. Another new feature that we're gonna have on the S8 is a dedicated physical button underneath the volume rocker. Some are saying that you can customize this for shortcuts and things, but most rumors are pointing towards this being a dedicated button to launch Samsung's very own Bixby AI Assistant. Now this assistant is supposed to be quite advanced supporting some form of visual search as well. So an example that's been rumored is, say you're out and you're going shopping and you see a product, then you can just press the button and it will visually search that for you on Google or something. So that should be pretty cool. This Bixby Assistant along with that dedicated button should make Samsung pay transactions quicker and easier as well. And moving on to the bottom of the devices, the first thing we see is a USB type C port. So this has got an upgrade from last year, which had micro USB. And as well as that, we do see a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So this is not something that Samsung are gonna get rid of this year anyway. Now, what's interesting is according to the leaks, we are gonna be having earphones inside the box that are tuned by AKG. AKG have a great reputation when it comes to audio. And if this is the case, then we should be getting some very nice earphones out of the box with the S8 and S8 Plus. Now for the speaker, we only see a single bottom facing speaker on all of the leaks. Now whether the earpiece is gonna act as a second speaker, so we have stereo speakers, that's yet to be seen, but something that's not confirmed as yet. Now, when can you officially hear about the S8 and when can you get your hands on it? Well, the Impact event is only just over two weeks away, so that's the 29th of March. And following the official Impact event, the rumored date for pre-orders is gonna be the 10th of April. Now, the official release date was rumored to be the 21st of April, but apparently this has been pushed back and we're gonna be looking at around 28th of April when it's actually gonna be released. What can you expect to pay for the S8 and S8 Plus? Well, you might wanna sit down for this one. It is gonna be pretty expensive. 799 euros and 899 euros is the rumored price. Now we've not had specific prices for UK and US, but based on the Euro prices, should give you a pretty good idea. You're definitely gonna be paying premium for these premium devices. So guys, that is everything that we know about the S8 and S8 Plus 
put all together in one video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. What do you think of the SH and SH Plus based on all of these leaks? Are you excited? I'm definitely excited. Drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I'm going to be having lots of coverage of the S8 and S8 Plus as soon as they're announced and released, including lots of super SAF style coverage, camera comparison, speed tests, all of that good stuff. If you want to see all of that first, then make sure you've subscribed and switched on notifications. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super SAF TV, and I'll see you next time.